A very good evening to you and thank you for joining us on Y254 Updates. My name is Patricia Murioki. Welcome to the broadcast. Over 24 county assemblies have so far approved the BBI-sponsored Constitution of Kenya Amendment Bill 2020. Bungoma, Nyeri, Muranga, Machakos, Makueni, Nyamira, Nyandarwa, Garissa, Kirinyaga, Kitua and Mombasa counties are the latest to pass the bill. The Building Bridges Initiative Bill is now headed to the National Assembly and the Senate. The bill are so far only be re been rejected by the Baringo County Assembly. Or not, it's the voice of the people. Every election, there was a Pre, uh, there was violence. BBI is going to bring this country together and hold this country together. Every election, there was a pre, uh, there was violence. BBI is going to bring this country together and hold this country together. We protested that this matter should go to the people of Baringo through public participation. It was a rush of, uh, of a win-win of, of people who want to show off politically that they are, they are with certain politicians and that they, are, they, 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 they want, they want to, to, be, to be the first people to pass just for, 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 for clout. The MCAs denied allegations that the proposal was rejected. <laughs> Elsewhere, the Party of National Unity has kicked off a BBI sensitization campaign in Kiambu County to educate citizens on the particular of the document to make informed decisions. Being an intelligent person, you cannot support something that you don't know. We have taken it upon ourselves as a responsibility that we are going to give people information so that people can be informed. Still on matters, BBI, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, says over 3 million Kenyans supported the Building Bridges Initiative Bill. In a press statement, IBC says three months signature verification exercise approved the signatures out of the 4 million submitted for verification. The new development now gives county assemblies across the country to go ahead to debate the bill. President Uru Kenyatta on Tuesday led Kenyans in mourning the death of Juja Member of Parliament Francis Waititu. The Member of Parliament, who was serving his second term, succumbed to brain cancer at a Nairobi hospital on Monday night. He was first elected on the National Alliance TNA ticket in 2013 and was re-elected on a Jubilee ticket in the year 2017, despite having spent many months undergoing medical care in India. Waititu previously worked for the Kenyatta family in their farming ventures around rural town before venturing into politics. In his message, the head of state described Wakape as he was popularly known as a progressive, trusted and devoted leader. Deputy President William Ruto mourned the Juja MP as a selfless, bold and gifted with an, with an affable personality. He said that he was principled, hardworking and a respected leader who was above party politics. Busia health workers have called off their strike after nearly 72 days of a stalemate. This development comes after they signed a return to work formula with the county government on ending more than the 70 days of the strike. Busia County and the Kenya Union of Clinical Officers and the Kenya National Union of Nurses reached the agreement to restore services and end patient suffering. Busia County Governor Sos Peter Ojomong assured the workers that they will receive their pay as he called for compliance moving forward so that all parties can work in harmony. Nasema watarudi kazini. Sisi kuna jukumu tutafanya kwa kikisha mahali wanapofanya kazi kwa sawa malipo yao wanapata. 
majadiliano yataweza kuendelea kuhakikisha kwamba uh, migomo kama hii haiwezi kufanyika tena na sisi pia tumeweza ku, kujadiliana na kuafikiana na kaunti kwamba njia ya suluhu si ya kwenda mgomo badi bali tuwe na majadiliano mara kwa mara Five people died while four others were injured in a road accident at the Nidhi Bridge on the Meru Nairobi Highway in the Rakanidhi County. The accident occurred when a truck collided with a matatu on Monday at around 8 p.m. Mr. Alex Mugambi, who is the Rakanidhi County Rescue Team patron, said only one passenger in the matatu survived the crash. ndo saa moja na 55 nikapigwa nikaambiwa gari gari yangu moja imepata accident so mahali nilikuwa nilikuwa natoka embu nikakibia hapo nikapata gari ilikuwa imebeba abiria watano na ndereva mmoja na ni kama abiria wanne na ndereva wote wamefariki hapo hapo na ile kitu nimepata ni ati ni loli ilikuwa imetoka sehemu za kutoka Meru ilikuwa roli ya maziwa ikapoteza njia katikati hapo ya ndaraza ya Nyiri hiyo gari ikapata hii gari nyingine asienda ilikuwa inatoka chuka ikiwa ilikuwa ilikuwa inaelekea Chogoria ni kama imeipata saidi ya ya kwenda Chogoria alafu hiyo gari ikagonga sienda na watu watano wamefariki hapo na mmoja amekimbishwa hospitali. Kwa watu wa Rori ni kama kuna wamepeleka hospitali unajua Rori imeingia kwa mto kabisa. So wakati mimi nimefika nilikuwa na nasaidia wale walikuwa kwa gari tuone kama kuna yeye mwingine hapo kwa hao watano ako uwai. Lakini tukapata hao watano ni kama wamefariki hapa hapa. Kulingana ni Rori kwa sababu Rori ilikuwa inateremka kutoka Marima ilikuwa inaelekea saidi ya Chuka na ukiangalia mahali gari asienda iko ni kama imesukumwa ka, ka, kando kando ya barabara ni kama ni lori maybe imekosa brakes alafu ikatupa alafu ika We take a short break on Y254 updates don't go too far away we have more stories lined up for you Y254. Thank you for staying with us on Y254 Updates. If you're just joining us, welcome back to the broadcast. Over 100 public service vehicle operat operators in Nanyuki were trained on road safety in a bid to improve road transport services. The two-day training was organized by the National Transport and Safety Authority and traffic police aimed at building capacity and ensuring provision of safe, reliable, and efficient road transport services. The training at Nanyuki is part of the National Transport and Safety Authority Authority's broader strategy of ensuring high safety standards and compliance with public transport regulations by motorists. Fee required for the nationwide border. Cabinet Secretary Kriyako Tobiko called on safety in the country and specifically inculcating discipline, national values and mindset change amongst border border riders. In my border border sector maintains directly and indirectly over 8 million Kenyans. That's what percentage of the Kenyan population. That's a huge sector. Uh, and the training will be done by NYS and the whole agenda is to make uh, border border transport uh, system to be a section of youths from minor slum Nyahururu sub county welcomed the move by the president to extend the Kazim Tani program the group says the program will go a long way in helping the youth navigate through the economic hard times brought by the covid-19 pandemic the program which is under the state department of housing and urban development was unveiled by the president in 2020 to provide social protection for workers whose prospects for daily or casual work had been disrupted by the covid-19 pandemic Minor Location Senior Chief Joseph Muraya Waidaka and Laikipia MCA Irene Washuka said the program came as a relief to the youths and young women. 
ndago kazi katika maana imekuwa clean tumeona nyinyi wenyewe umekuwa na discipline mimi sijakuwa na cases na watu wale wanafanya kazi mitaani tumeona maana imebadilika kwa sababu hata kama ni youth wamekuwa watu wazuri kwa hivyo tugeomba hiyo kazi iendelee ndio tuendelee tuki jisaidia uwapatie kama rotation ikifika miasi sita tena wanarudi hao vijana wamejisaidia the program has also been held for taming runaway crimes in the region tumeona ufanizi ufan, 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 mwingi wa hii kazi manake tulikuwa na wakati mgumu wakati tulikuwa naona vijana wetu wamekaa huku kijiji wengine Women in West Pokot County are set to benefit from the Ushanga initiative launched by the Cabinet Secretary Sports, Culture and Heritage, Amina Mohamed, who toured the area. The initiative set to benefit 3,500 women who create a channel where trainers on beadwork are dispatched to the grassroots. CS Mohamed, while on the tour, said that the Ushanga initiative and already empowered women from several other counties in purchasing beads and machines. The CS reiterated that they are going to market at Ushanga initiative products to both the local and international markets to help empower women from pastoral communities for them to improve their livelihoods. Eh, kwa hivyo tutaendelea kuwasaidia. Tumeanza hatuwaachi, tuwashika mkono, tuendelee nao mpaka tuone penye watafika. It's a traditional uh, talent. It's something that uh, they have done throughout their, their life. So our intention was to use what they already have uh, to add value and make sure that uh, they improve their livelihoods. On matters business, average tea prices for factories managed by the Kenya Tea Development Agency have dropped by 13.3% to Kenya shillings 243.31 in the last seven months and in January, as continued high production in the region coupled with global oversupply exits pressure on the price. The average price dropped from 280 shillings and 58 cents for a similar seven-month period in the previous financial year as a sector grapples with a persistent of supply and the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. Greenleaf del deliveries by farmers affiliated to the KTDA remained high, recording a marginal drop to 726 million kilos in the seven months compared to 770 million kilos delivered for a similar period a year earlier. On our international desk, U.S. authorities arrested the wife of jailed Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman on Monday at an airport outside of Washington on narcotic smuggling charges. The Justice Department say that Emma Coronel, that one faces one charge of conspiracy to traffic cocaine, heroin, and marijuana for importation into the United States. Guzman was a leader of the Sinaloa Cartel, one of Mexico's most notorious drug trafficking groups. He ran an operation that delivered delivered hundreds of tons of narcotics into the United States and was behind multiple murders of those who crossed him according to court filings. He was extradicted to the United States in the year 2017 to start trial and was convicted and sentenced to life in prison two years later. Coronel, according to the Justice Department, took part in cartel activities and also allegedly assisted in two plots to help Guzman escape from Mexican prison. Moving on, Facebook has said it will restore news articles to its users in Australia. This comes after the social media giant had blocked news to Australians since last Thursday in response to a proposed law which would make it and Google pay news publishers for content. Facebook reached a deal with the government on plans to make tech giants pay for journalism. The agreement sees four changes made to the proposed media code, including adding a period of mediation before a government arbitrator intervenes in a dispute between tech companies companies and the publishers. So that we won't automatically be subject to a forced negotiation. The Australian government backed down on several elements of their media code, including how disputes between publishers and tech giants would be resolved. 
Disagreements over fees are now subject to two months of mediation before a government arbitrator makes a decision. Despite the concessions, ministers argue that the main aspects of the bill live on. Absolutely critically, the code maintains its key measures. Namely, it's a mandatory code, a world-leading code. Secondly, it's based on two-way value exchange. And third, it involves a final offer arbitration mechanism. This landmark what? bill aims to ensure that Australian media outlets can recover some of the advertising revenue that they've lost to tech giants. The government in Canberra argues it is currently fighting, quote, a proxy war for other countries who want to introduce similar measures. In advance of the bill coming into force, Google has already signed deals worth tens of millions of euros with Australia's major news publishers. A week after their very public breakup, Facebook and Australia are friends again. The social media giant had blocked users from sharing Australian news articles after objecting. On matters COVID-19, 194 people have tested positive to the disease out of a sample size of 3,935 uh, tested in the last 24 hours. The total confirmed positive cases are now at 104,500. The cumulative tests so far conducted are 1,273,281 from the cases 146 are Kenyans while 48 are foreigners. In terms of distribution of the cases by county. We have Nairobi leading with 132 cases, Kiambu County 9 cases, Meru County 7, Kisumu County stands at 6, Kilifi County 6, Laikipia County 5, Mombasa County 4, Kajendo County 4, Nakuru County, Trukana, and Wasingishu and Machakos County each at 3 cases. Kisi County at uh, 2, Lamu, Muranga, Nandi, Taita Taveta, Transoya, Busia, and Embu County start at one case per county. 39 patients have recorded uh, from this disease, sorry, 39 patients have recovered from the disease, which brings the total number of recoveries in the country to 85,665. 36 are from various health facilities, while three are from home based and isolation care. We have 344 patients who are currently admitted in various health facilities countrywide while 1,283 patients are on home-based care isolation. 55 patients are in the intensive care unit, 26 of whom are on ventilatory support and 23 on supplemental oxygen and 6 patients are on observation. That is all we had for you tonight on Y254 Updates. My name is Patricia Murioki. Do have yourselves a very good night. We'll meet again tomorrow, same time. Giants would be resolved. Disagreements over fees are now... ...of mediation...